Hey, welcome to the Photo Report. This is a place where we talk to other photographers about how they run their business, how they balance their lives, and how they stay inspired. This episode, we're up at the Ya yeah Pop Up um, for Ya yeah Furniture, which was just a really fun week of events. But um, this was up at the Hudson Lofts and had the chance to interview Max Wanger, who is crazy talented. If you don't know his work, you should. Um, but we talk about just how he balances weddings, commercial work, his life, having a kid, and all that fun stuff. So I hope you love it. This is Braden Flynn, your host, and this is The Photo Report. Um, well, hey, welcome to The Photo Report. And sitting here with Max Wanger, and not Wagner, for all you people out there. Um, yeah, Max Wanger, who is lives here in the LA area and is an amazing photographer and just going to be talking a bit about, I want to hear more of sort of your story and then sort of how it's progressed to where it is today. And he has an art show tonight where the Hudson Lofts for the Yacht Pop-Up um, showing, which is going to be fun. But yeah, Max, will you give just a little bit of a back, like even just start like, how did you get into photography? Where did that come from? And then we'll sort of go from there and sort of, you have a very specific style that is very max, you know, and how that developed. Yeah, I, um, I took the first job out of college, which was at Fox Sports. Um, no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, what did you go to college for? Sports and business, ironically. Right. Like, yeah. But that was just, that's a whole other story. I um, designed my own major after changing majors two or three times. Um, the whole sports thing was just very random, but I took the first job that was offered. It was at Fox Sports, and um, I worked my way up the ladder. I started as a PA and worked my way up to um, a senior producer and, and director there. And... Um, was there almost eight years and the last couple years just wasn't happy um, and photography was always my outlet from an early age so I kind of went back to that the last couple years knowing how unhappy I was I was searching for something else didn't really know how to leave my job I mean I was so comfortable I, you know having been there for so long you get used to a 401k and a steady paycheck and um, just a way of life and the unhappiness made it sort of impossible for me to stay um, and I decided to pursue photography because it was just that outlet that started as a hobby and turned into freelance I did things on the side and yeah. when we traveled I always brought my camera and I just I could lose myself behind the lens and that's what I've always loved about photography so I I decided to leave the job and kind of jump feet first into what turned out to be the wedding world, which was right. by accident. And um, yeah, that's sort of how I got started doing it professionally. So about eight or nine years ago, I started shooting some weddings and um, it kind of snowballed. So um, you said eight or nine years ago, so you said? I think about yeah. eight or nine years ago. Yeah, in, in the time when I was at my job, knowing that I wanted to leave, I would surf the internet and just kind of look at photography sites. And I stumbled upon some wedding photographers who were doing things differently. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I could put my own spin on a wedding. That might be kind of fun and cool. So I ended up staging a wedding um, with my sister, who was the bride. And her boyfriend's best friend was the groom. And I shot it in a park, just yeah. took some portraits, kind of did it the way I thought, okay, this is how I would style it, do it more editorial. And, and Margo, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, um, started sending them out to blogs, just different blogs, wedding blogs, art blogs, design blogs, saying, hey, my boyfriend just shot this wedding. Um, thought you might like to you know, look at the pictures. And that was sort of the era when a lot of the wedding blogs which are now popular today were sort of just it starting was, out. It was a different world back then, yeah. There, the, it was not nearly as much of what you see now in terms of blogs and just the amount of photography and photographers who are in this industry now. But um, nonetheless, there were blogs that we ID'd that we thought, let's send them to these blogs to see what the response is. Like, I have no idea if this is even something I want to do. And within about a month, I think it was about a month, after the, the images got up on the internet, the response was so 
positive that we were booked for the entire year. And I had no choice but to sort of become this wedding photographer, not knowing how to do it, not knowing how to run a business, not knowing how to make albums or all these things that I had to sort of figure out on the go. But people saw these images and said, we want those. Can you do it? And you sort of, you know, fake it. Of course it. I can. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I can do it. And we had all these bookings for wedding suddenly. And that's how the career sort of started and took off. And the rest is sort of history. But um, yeah, kind of crazy, but, but amazing because the wedding world especially has been so good to us and um, met so many wonderful people and traveled to so many wonderful places and have really been able to find a way to get in in the industry. And I, again, back then it was different. There weren't as many photographers doing it yeah. and there certainly weren't as many photographers doing things sort of non-traditionally. And that's really the angle that I took. I wanted to do something where you know, it was more unexpected and more art based. Yeah. And so I just trusted my instincts. I didn't know anything. I was naive. And I think that was the best possible thing was not to know. Yeah. How this takes away a lot of the fear. Yeah. I, I knew no one. I knew nothing about it. I just did my own thing. I thought I liked how these images looked. Hopefully other people will and hope they'll attract the right clientele because of that. And that's ended up what you know, that that's what happens and it's been it's been a really cool ride since. So. Yeah, amazing. I want to. I'm going to go back to that, but I want to go back to sort of earlier. A lot of. I think a lot of times you'll. And I'm not saying this is what you're saying, but a lot of people will say, "No, I'm like sick of my nine to five, and so I got out to start my own thing." Which sometimes is like harder than being in the nine to five. Nine to five. I mean, and what you were doing for Fox is actually most people think like that's pretty freaking cool. You know, like people would probably dream to be in that job. What What about that sort of felt stifling to you? Because even it sounds like you got to move up to pretty like high ranking positions yeah. there. Yeah, the first the first four or five years were wonderful. It was crazy. I was I didn't have a life, but that was okay. I was single. I you know that I was learning on the go, and I was part of live television and producing, and ultimately making commercials that promoted the sporting events that Fox carried. And it was a very cool world. It's a fun industry. Um, yeah, and I was literally there at eight in the morning, and I wouldn't come home till midnight. But that kind of wears on you after a little bit and especially when you start to realize that I don't really know if this is what I want to do yeah uh, you know but I didn't like who I worked for and Fox Fox is a big company and there's a lot of politics and levels mm -hmm. and even though it was a very creative department that I was in and I love the people that I worked with it was still a big company and not just not fun to work for certain people and yeah. so I I knew ultimately that at some point I would have to try to find I mean I've always wanted to be my own boss right and I've always wanted to do something really creative for myself so um, yeah it, w it was a dream job for a while yeah. but it, it, it got old for me and I just knew that I had to try something else so yeah and how much would you say that because let's say you've got young kid gets a camera wants to be a photographer or maybe like sees your work and is like I want to be a photographer like Max and we'll shoot weddings um, because there's good money in it you know um, how much would you say that job really played into sort of how you have sort of developed as the photographer that you are in terms of because you were producing sounds like you're directing and all that sort of stuff maybe it's even played into more like the commercial stuff that you're doing now yeah maybe maybe yeah I I think, I don't know, I think I, there was just a maturity there, you know, I, yeah. I'd grown up in this world and, I, and I, it took me a good amount of time to figure out what I really wanted to do. Whereas if I had started photography at 21 or 22, I think it just would have been a lot harder and I yeah. wouldn't have been as maybe grounded or familiar with what I could really do. And yeah. I think I learned how to be really creative, partly at Fox. Um, and. I made some friends who introduced me to certain things design-wise that affected my sort of, you know, my design sensibility and how I saw the world. So yeah, I think there were influences for sure at Fox that helped the transition. But um, yeah, I think just being at a, at a place in my life where it was the right time. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, and I, I think probably too, it's just like one of those things where you get to that place where you 
can sort of check that off. Be like, OK, I've done that. I don't need to go back there. Right. And now I can do this. And I actually know that this is what I want to do, which right. is cool. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think you know, in college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. This job turned out to be great, but I still didn't yeah. know what I wanted to do. And at you know, 30, basically, I was like, well, I think I want to do photography. And, and that's what I tell a lot of people who are so worried that they don't know what they want to do with their lives. There's, there's always time. Yeah. And there's just, you know, if you're patient or if you just let things kind of play out and you surrender to that idea, of, okay, I'm not going to force things. When, mm. when the time is right, those doors will open. And that's sort of what happened. And I really believe that, that your time, you know, you just have to sort of, if it doesn't happen right away, patience and, and trust and just learning. That's a big thing. Just on so many different levels, learning so much about yourself and about how the world works. I mean, you know, yeah. coming out of college, you don't really know. And it, it took a while, but it prepared me um, to, to really sort of start a business and, and, and do this for a living. Yeah, yeah. And so back to now you've got a whole year booked, you know, and obviously with that, I know the event that you're talking about that you staged and shot. And then, yeah. Um, so that obviously had its style to it. And obviously you shot it th that way because you were attracted to that. I mean, how have you sort of taken that first year and then developed and, I mean, are you bored of your style or is it something you feel like your style, like people want, almost like Annie Leibovitz, you know, it's like shot, they, they want her to shoot that same portrait. You know, it's like people want now Max where I think at a certain stage when you shot so many weddings, are you like wanting to experiment or how, how does that whole thing play out for you? Yeah, I think that's the biggest challenge. It's, it's staying uh, motivated and how do you push the envelope every time and how do you, you know, I think the biggest thing when I started was I didn't want to just be in the middle, you know, I wanted to, how can I, how can I push the envelope and set the bar? How can I, how can I be at the top of what I do? And that's still, and, I, and I'm not there yet. And I don't, you know, I don't, there's so many talented photographers and there's so much inspiration that I, I get from so many people. But the challenge is, you know, how do you keep pushing yourself? Yeah. And how do you not shoot every engagement shoot with some balloons? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, and that's every year, that's the new challenge. Yeah. How do you bring something new to the table that's unexpected? How do you do something that, that makes people stop and go, wow, you know, I think that's what we all try to do. And, and um, you know, the negative space thing, which sort of just happened um, early on is something that people ask all the time. So I do that all the, you know, I do that where the people are really small in frame or in the corner and um, that's just something that I do for everybody because I feel like that's sort of expected and that's fine. But, um, but yeah, it's the sort of like, what can I do that's not that, or what can I do that's a little bit different so that it's interesting for other people, but also for yourself, you feel like you're bringing something refreshing to the table that, yeah. that hasn't been done or, but that's really hard because almost everything has been done. So it's yeah. really putting your own spin on it totally without about Coffee the new and get the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know who Art Stryber is? Yes. I would imagine you would. Um, I heard him talk out at um, one of the Palm Springs photo expos. Um, you know, and he was, because he's, he, that guy works his tail off. He's one of the hardest working guys in the commercial world. You know, but he was basically saying editorial jobs become his personal work. You know, where, you know, they're not big paying jobs, but but then it's always like getting one for the client, sort of like your negative space one, and then one for you. You know, exactly. so it's like being able to like get your bases covered, and then you have the freedom to then take the stuff and get a little bit more creative because you've got your bases covered. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's sort of the stance that you take. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I make sure I do what I know is expected, and then I, from there, can take a little more liberty to experiment and play. Um, and that's what I think photography in general should be—is just playing. You know to not worry about the rules, to break the rules. Having an education or going to school for photography is great. There's so much that, that you know, I think is essential to know and learn, but at the same time, I don't have any formal schooling. And I try as much as possible not to think about what other people want or what's expected. And, and I've always told people, break the rules. You know, if you think it looks good, trust your instincts. You know, there's no reason why a composition has to be a certain way although I am attracted to certain compositions but I think 
the beauty is that we all see the world in our own way mm -hmm. and everybody's photographs reflect that and that's amazing and I think everyone has their own style and so um, how do you how do you encourage someone to find their own style to play yeah yeah just go out and shoot because you won't discover it unless you're actually out there doing it um, you know the negative space thing I've always been inspired by um, Japan um, I grew up going to Japan every summer and there's a minimalist sensibility there and the design and the architecture and um, that's always been ingrained in me and I think that's where the negative space idea and part of that came from seeing um, Japan and I knew I wanted that to be part of my photography and, and in the wedding world at that time I didn't see that happening like where people were tiny or just in different corners of the frame or whatever it was I just was playing and experimenting and that sort of for better or for worse became my style right. and it's been cool but I didn't invent that style I mean there's people who've been doing that for forever and I don't yeah. claim to it's not that's not me that's not like that's not my thing I just like doing it and I think it looks cool but um, you know I, it's just yeah it's just going out there and, and shooting and you're gonna stumble upon something that clicks and you're like oh that could be really cool and that might end up being you know something that you become known for but yeah, you, you said something earlier, which is something that I, I mean, strive for and struggle with, which, which is, you know, it's like ultimately when you are sort of at the high level, like you and I are, in, in the sense of like wanting to be the best, you know, wanting to be at the top of the game and wanting to continually be better, um, at a certain point that gets, like if you want to always have the next wedding or next thing that you've shot be better than the last thing that you've shot at a certain point when you're shooting you know, 60 plus events or shoots a year, you know, it's like that gets daunting. Yeah. You know, um, what, have you thought about what success is to you or like what, what is the top of the game? Because I think if you're comparing yourself, like there's other photographers that have different style, you know, like, and I don't know if we, you ever can, like, I don't know what, like, have you sat down and defined like what that top is to you or like where you'd ever be like, okay, like, sort of here, this is cool. Or is it just like an, something that's vague out here that you want to get that you don't know what it is? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, it's out there, but I don't know. I don't think there's a top that I'll ever reach. Yeah. Because I think if you're at the top, there's all, I just think there's always room to go, to keep going. Yeah. Like the most successful people in any business are continually pushing the envelope. And I don't think they're satisfied with being on the top. There's always that next step because there's always going to be people here who are going to climb that ladder, yeah. who have that push and you want to stay above, you know? And I think the top doesn't really exist, yeah. but it, it pushes me to yeah. want to get close, you know, or to, to at least be looked at as someone who's doing something that yeah. that is making a difference or means something to somebody or you know and totally. I, I think photography can be art and is art and I think that's where the challenge is is like how do you keep doing that how do you keep and sometimes I mean I, I've been in so many ruts and funks where I just feel like throwing in the towel and yeah. like I'm never gonna be this I'm never gonna be who I want to be and I'm never gonna take a good photograph and I'm the most critical of my own work I think as we all are yeah. um, but you know you go through those periods there are ups and downs but you try to find inspiration in all kinds of places to, to keep pushing yourself to um, to climb that ladder yeah so. outside of Japan and you're growing up where where do you look for inspiration traveling in general mm -hmm. just it's a you gain a perspective you know that you just see how other people live and how the world exists in different different places and I think that opens my eyes to a lot of things to colors and to just I don't know I, I would say traveling is my biggest inspiration other than that it's just you know it's books it's going and finding books and just stumbling upon things magazines it's, um, 
I don't know, our little boy inspires me now, you know, you're, you're a dad, I think your kids end up being your biggest inspiration because everything is so new and innocent and you start to notice things that you've never noticed or you appreciate things that you never used to appreciate and it just opens your eyes a little bit larger and you're like, oh, that's really cool or oh, I want to be, I mean, more than anything, like I want him to be proud of me yeah. and so I'm like, you know, I want to do the best that I can in everything for him. So. He's a huge inspiration. And, yeah. Um, having now having a son who's two, um, how do you, how has that changed the way that you work? I mean, for me, it's a really huge struggle of that work-life balance, and yeah. you know, constantly feeling like the amount that I need to give to grow my businesses, you know, that sort of thing. Then, like, I don't have the time to do that and be a good dad and do this. So I like, feel like. It, constant failure in every area of my life you know um, do you struggle with that or how do you balance that? totally yeah it's, a, it's an ongoing struggle it's like how do you how do you manage your career and be a good dad and be a good husband it's like almost impossible yeah so yeah I haven't figured, figured it out yet I think we're just doing our best to, to balance as much as we can and I'm trying to take jobs that are closer to home and we're not traveling as much so that I can be around more. Little things like that make a difference. We used to work out of our home, now we decided to get an office space so that we can work and then come home and just devote time to being home and shutting off. Yeah. Because working from home, we were always on and there was never like an ending point to work. So that's helped with just our relationship in general. And um, Does Margot shoot with you? Margot's his wife shoot with you for most everything you shoot? Not anymore. Okay. I mean, she'll, she'll do weddings that are local, but um, since having Dash, we, she's sort of taken some time off. She runs the business. I mean, this business wouldn't run without her, and mm -hmm. this whole thing wouldn't exist without her. She's a huge part of it, but um, she's sort of taken a little bit of time off. She'll still shoot here, here and there, but yeah, I mean, having a kid throws everything out of whack, and you're yeah. sleep deprived, and you, you just, you're learning how to be a parent and you're just it's survival yeah it's getting a little easier now that he's a little bit older but it's hard like I thought I got a job when he was I think four or five months old I got a job commercial job San Francisco just for I think it was just for a day but I had to spend the night and I thought this will be great like I, I could use the break I'll have my own bed I can sleep yeah. in like this will be great but at the airport, I just, I was so sad. I didn't think that I would be that way, yeah. but I missed him and I didn't want to be away and I felt like I was going to miss out. And all these thoughts start going through your head, like what if the plane crashes and what, you know, like all these like, yeah, yeah. and I didn't have a good time because I was away from home. So that's just, that's a good, certain good people, yeah, I mean, I don't know, you know, I think there's a lot of people who really relish the opportunity to get away and have that time to focus on their career and yeah. take those trips and then come home and be fully present. Um, and I thought I would be that way, but I don't like to travel without them. Yeah. So we try to take trips when I work, I try to bring them with me. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think to each their own, but totally. for me, that's what, what's worked to have them with me when we travel. And one of, I, on that subject, one of the, cause it's something I'm constantly thinking about because it's a huge struggle for me. Um, but I was listening to another podcast. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, but he's done a lot of marketing for American Apparel. He's just written a couple books. I wish I could remember his name. But um, he's about to get married. And it was Dane Sanders is running a podcast. Um, and he was asking him and saying, like, so you're getting married. Like, how do you feel like that's going to change? And he's like, well, I haven't really thought about it. And then he actually, like, sat and thought about it. It's like, here's, here's what I think happens is, I think he was saying, I have so many friends that you, you basically have to compare apples to apples. It's like if you are married and have kids and you have a business or whatever you're doing and you're comparing yourself to your friend or someone else who's like being crazy successful but he's single, you know, um, like you're going to kill yourself. You're going to, why, you, of course you're going to be like f fall short of like what that person's doing because you're, it's not, it's not the same plane, you know, and for me I was like, oh, that's pretty much what I do for everything. It's like, I'm, I'm still struggling and comparing myself to like what I could be doing as like a single guy, you know, without a family and, and then I'm falling short versus being like, oh, like you have to actually sit down and go, what is your priority? 
I mean, there's plenty of people who are successful with families, but sort of neglect their families. Right. Or, you know. Yeah, I think um, for me, I've learned pretty quickly that my priority now is family. Yeah. And work is, I mean, we have to work to survive and pay the bills, but I have made decisions. I've learned to say no more if it means spending more time with family or if it means staying home or, you know, there's certain things now where I'm, you know, decision making changes a little bit and being happy and healthy and being there for him, for Dash and not wearing myself out, you know, it's just, it's allowed me to sort of take a deep breath, step back and evaluate my life because I've always been someone that just, I mean, maybe not at your level because I know you work probably more than anyone that I, that I know of, um, but you know, we all work so hard and late nights and traveling and all these things. And that was my life for so long, but you just get tired, you know, and I can't afford to be that tired and that stressed right now. And yeah. so I'm trying to make decisions that are more about putting myself first, putting my family first. Um, but to your point about, you know, sort of seeing or thinking about other people who are doing amazing things, but they don't have the life that you have, you know, they're single and they can, yeah. they can afford to spend yeah. all this time doing things. I think I learned really early on, just in general with about how to stay like sort of focused on what you're doing mm -hmm. is to just keep your head down and mm -hmm. not listen to all the chatter or go on the blogs or Instagram. Or yeah, because it's so easy to start comparing yourself to other people and thinking like, why am I not doing that? Or I wish I was taking that photograph or yeah. look what they're doing or, or look who they're shooting person, for yeah. and you start to put yourself down like oh I'm not you know I should be doing that there's no, you know but if you can and it's hard I mean I still I mean I'm on, I'm on Instagram I see what's going on but I try not to read blogs as much I try not to worry about what other people are doing because I mean you just have to be happy for what other people are doing and other people's success mm -hmm. I really think that if you can be happy for other people and not think not have so much jealousy and not think like, why isn't it me? Then, you know, your time will come and you'll get the jobs and you'll, you know, if you work hard enough and you're talented enough, you'll be fine. And so I just kind of trust that if I keep my head down and focus on what I want to do and not worry about everything else, that I'll be that much better and focused on, on being successful and happy. Yeah. So, right. Um, can we shift and talk a little bit about going into commercial? I, I've, I know I've talked to you about it before, but a bit about um, when you first got an agent. I don't know if you still have that same agent or a different yeah. agent, and then how you've sort of morphed into commercial work, and then I guess how that's going. Yeah, I'm, I've always been interested in commercial and advertising, um, photography. And while I was shooting weddings, I, I it was always in the back of my head, like, how do you get an agent? Right? How do you get into that world? Like, I had no idea. And it was because of weddings and because of the style that I was putting out there on my website and my blog that another photographer named Sharon Montrose, who's a, an amazing photographer, she focuses on animals. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen some of her work, but um, she saw a wedding or two on a blog and told her agent, who's now my agent, you should look at this guy's work. I think he'd be a great fit. So Dara, who's my agent, called me and said, hey, I'd love to meet with you and talk about um, repping you. And I thought, this sure. is cool. Yeah. <laughs> and that's sort of how it started. I took the meeting and we did a sort of trial basis. She thought my wedding work could translate or that style could translate in the commercial, in the mm -hmm. commercial world. So we gave it a shot and yeah I've been with her now for I think five or six years and it's been amazing I mean it's it's another door that opened because I was putting myself out there and really trying to put the work that I was proud of out there for people to see and that's the thing that I learned early on too was that the power of the blog world the power of the internet you have no idea who's looking at your stuff or who's right. on a blog or a website but you have to put the work that you're proud of out there and um, so the commercial world's been a completely different challenge, but a really fun one and something I really enjoy. But when I first started, I knew nothing about the commercial world, just like the wedding world. It was very similar. 
and we had to tell clients certain things that weren't true necessarily you know that I had this experience where I really didn't but you kind of just have to go and, yeah. and try to get your foot in and um, it took you know it took a little bit for me to get used to it and comfortable I really didn't know if I wanted to do it after a while because it's so different and and really stressful yeah you know the they responsibility so fast, it's so and, fast and and you're dealing with so many people from agencies to you know the production side to it's just there's a lot that goes into it and everybody has their eyes on you yeah like you're the one that's putting everything together and that for me who you know I'm I'm quieter and more soft-spoken to, to have to sort of come out of my shell and be that kind of outspoken guy on set and really take charge was hard but I learned in the beginning you know how to do it and and now I'm way more comfortable. Like I, I still get really nervous before shoots, but mm. I really enjoy the challenge. And and um, and I love when you're working for the right client and the right people. It's it's really really awesome. Um, so now I juggle both worlds: the weddings and the commercial side. The weddings are consistent, which is nice, and that's hard to turn down when someone says, "Well, you shoot my wedding; it's next year." You're like, "Sure, I could use that paycheck." Yeah. I still love shooting the right weddings with the right clients okay whereas the commercial world is very like I could get a call tomorrow and be asked to shoot in New York next week mm -hmm. you never know when the jobs are coming and you kind of ride the waves like it really sort of happens all at once you get a bunch of jobs and then it quiets down and then you get a bunch of jobs and it quiets down and those quiet periods are really scary because you're like well, what's happening why you know and I think there are some elite commercial commercial photographers who, who work consistently but for the rest of us who aren't quite yeah. there yet, you know, it's like, yeah. But in a way, that's sort of nice for me because I can do the weddings and I can do the commercial work, and it's been a nice balance and fun to juggle. So, what what do you, would you say are the biggest like now that you are several years, a lot of years into it, you know, and doing both? What are sort of the things that you struggle with the most now? Whether it's like business related or anything like that, or just um, I mean, up until a, a few weeks ago, it was still balancing life and work. Yeah. You know, this office space that we got is about a month old, and it's made a huge difference having that separation. Like, yeah. like I said, and um, yeah, I think that's that really for the longest time has been the biggest challenge. Is like, how do you, how do you work, and then how do you be? That's when I got a studio and we had our first kid. Like, yeah. we had an in-house studio, and it's just like. Yeah, I need to. It was when it's like you'd go to. My wife would work with me at the same, you know, in our early days as well, and we'd be working together all day. And then you know, got to the point where it's like, let's go hang out with people. It's like, what about us? Us time? And it's like, I've been sitting next to you all day long. Like, what about other people? And she's like, that's not quality time. You know, it's right. like you need to go and separate. And and then once with a yeah. kid involved, it's even more tough because it's like I need to work. Yeah. But you need to help out. You know. Yeah, yeah. Margo and I worked in the same room, yeah. you know, opposite ends, but still, we would spend all day, every day together, and to not have that separation where you can leave for a little bit, yeah, it was hard, you know. Yeah. Like it just so now we can come and go as we please. We have a space to work out of, and we can call our own shots. But at least we're out of the house. Yeah. And when we come home, it's like now that's time to to be home. Yeah. And be present and not be on our computers and yeah so that's a new thing and I highly recommend it it's, yeah it's been so far so good yeah being able to shut off at a certain point yeah. is super important yeah. um, for everything in your life yes um, so last last little question would be if you could go back to your young max self hey, let's go back eight years and could give yourself some advice what do you think you'd tell yourself like you're you've decided to leave your job, you're gonna go off on your own and start your own photography business. I don't know if you were even thinking that yet. Um, um, it would save you a lot of pain and suffering. Yeah, I think I'm a natural worrier. I've yeah. been worried since I was a little kid about everything. So I, I would say let go. Don't worry so much about things that you can't control. Yeah. 
um, I think it's advice I would tell myself right now yeah. as well <laughs> totally. because it's just you spend so much time worrying about things the what ifs and yeah it doesn't solve anything it doesn't solve anything and it just it'll drive you mad and it's it's not healthy and so yeah to let go to yeah. just stay in the now and meditate I've just started meditating which nice. is yeah it's trying to keep me like not thinking about tomorrow or next week yeah but what are your when you sit what are your meditation goals like what do you, you sit down for a certain amount of time are you like listening to something I try to do it 10 minutes a day I'm yeah. just I'm in yeah. the beginner yeah That's cool but I just needed something to, to ground myself yeah and to sort of just concentrate on letting letting go and yeah. breathing yeah. and I think it it's just a way of settling myself and yeah. just trying to eliminate all the noise um, because it's hard to think sometimes it's hard yeah. to focus and it's hard to to stay fresh and I think for so long people said you have to meditate and I was always like okay I will I will I will yeah. but um, I got sick recently and it took a lot out of me and I just thought you know what I want to get healthy and I want to do something that is good for me yeah. and the meditation for now has been really nice it's just been a way to again let go yeah that should be my motto I'm gonna get that tattooed it's somewhere good theme, good theme song for you on that topic yes frozen Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that just started getting some play in our car, and I'm like, uh, okay. I don't know what it is about that song. Totally. Uh, so where can people who don't know where to find your work, where can people find your work? And then we didn't even talk much about your print shop, but sell prints, and that's, that's been something that's been um, Yeah, that's growing. just been a, been a side project that, that started out as like, hey, maybe we can make a few extra bucks here and there. And people used to ask about you know, how can I get some of your prints? So we decided to put some up on a website and it really just, it, it took off really quickly with word of mouth and a couple um, friends blogged about it and we did some giveaways and it's just really turned into this side yeah. business, which has been really, really cool. So, um, so yeah, the print shop's great. It's maxwingerprintshop.com. Uh, the wedding work is maxandfriends.com and then the commercial editorial work is maxwanger.com so awesome yeah well check them out and on instagram it's and all those different things as yeah. well yeah yeah uh, well cool well thanks so much for your cool. time bud thanks, yeah, yeah. good chat yeah